Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic, I mean an exponential, I mean both, equation. We have e to the power x plus ln x equals 2e squared. And we're going to be solving for x. Now this kind of looks like a hard problem, doesn't it? How can a power of e equal 2 times another power of e? I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to go ahead and divide both sides by e squared. That's going to give me a 2. Now since we're dividing powers of e, what's the rule? The rule says if you divide a to the x by a to the y, you get a to the power x minus y. So you're supposed to subtract the exponents e to the power x plus ln x minus 2. Notice that this is an exponent equals 2. And then we can go ahead and natural log both sides, right? And that's going to give us the following ln e to the power x plus ln x minus 2 equals ln 2. Now this is a power, so we can bring it down and ln e is 1. So this becomes x plus ln x minus 2. Some people also say that they ln and e cancel each other out and we end up with the exponent. Same idea. And right hand side is ln2. Make no mistake, it's not 2, it's ln2. Because we are just natural logging both sides and then using the properties. Great. Let's add 2 to both sides. x plus ln x equals 2 plus ln2. What? Are you serious? I can hear some of you say this is too easy. I can do this in 5 seconds with my eyes closed while juggling and biking at the same time. By the way, don't try this. Okay, fine. x equals 2 from here, right? Obviously. But is that the only solution? That will be our million dollar question. And obviously we're going to be looking at other alternatives for solving this problem. And I'm kind of thinking about maybe uh, a third method, possibly. Anyways, let's continue with the second method first. I mean, we did the first method first, don't get me wrong. This is the second method, second method second. So we have e to the power x plus ln x equals 2e squared. Now let me tell you something. Remember I told you at the very beginning that can a power of e be equal to 2 times a power of e? And happens to be the case. But if the problem was like this, like modify this problem slightly, okay? Well, what if we had something like this? Then you could easily say, oh, okay, they have the same base, so this equals 2, right? And that would be a totally different problem. And guess what? In another video, we can talk about this problem because this problem also has some interesting implications. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and work on this. Now, the second method is basically separating the exponents. The, what is the rule for multiplication? a to the x times a to the y equals a to the power x plus y. Just like division, when you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. And if the exponents are added, you can always reverse engineer this and write it as e to the x times e to the ln x. I know I kind of made a big deal out of it, but this is actually reverse engineering. So kind of reversing the process, right? That's what it is. It's not always easy, by the way. Now, e to the ln x is an identity, right? This is x. So we get something like this, x e to the x equals 2e squared. Do you remember t e to the t? Obviously, t is my favorite drink. By the way, I'm drinking tea in the meantime. Anyways, that's a sage tea, by the way. Not like black tea, but black tea is my favorite. Anyways, why are we talking about tea? Let's forget it. Now, we have this equation, and what does that remind you? Lambert's w function, doesn't it? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and w both sides. That gives us w x e to the x equals w to e squared. And what was uh, Lambert's w function? When you apply it on t e to the t, by definition, you get t. In other words, it's the inverse function for t e to the t because it just reverses the process. Get it? Obviously, there is no nice way to express it. That's why we kind of have to use the w for this function. Make sense? But when you apply it on something special like this, you're going to get something special. So the result is going to be x from the left-hand side and 2 from the right-hand side. But you have to be careful because 
sometimes you may get two solutions. I'm talking about the real cases, right? So is that the only solution? That's something to look into definitely, but we're gonna look at the graph and that's gonna hopefully make more sense. But notice that we found the exact same answer with the second method. And that should be a surprise, right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the third method. I wasn't initially planning, but it just came to me that we can do it. e to the power x plus ln x equals 2e squared. Now instead of just manipulating all the powers and so on and so forth, using any identities, we can actually go ahead and just natural log both sides directly, can't we? Yes, we can do it. So ln this, should I use parentheses? I don't know. And ln this, definitely here because that's a product. Now, this again will move to the front, x plus ln x, but then ln e is one, so forget about it. And this one is kind of like the ln or log of a product. With the log of a product, we can turn this into the sum of two logs. And again, using the power property, this becomes a two. So we get x plus ln x equals ln two plus two, or we can write this as two plus ln two. And then we can go ahead and say, oh, okay, x equals two works. But how do you prove that that's the only solution? That's a good question. Let's go ahead and take a look at this from a function standpoint. So let's go ahead and call this function f. So f of x is equal to x plus ln x. And then we're gonna go ahead and differentiate it. One plus one over x. We're gonna set it equal to zero. And then from here, we're gonna get x equals negative one. What does that mean? It means we have a critical point. And let's make a table. We have f prime here. That's gonna be my first row. Actually, first row is x. And then I have the f prime, and then I have the f. The root for the derivative, the only solution is negative one. So I'm gonna put that here, put a little zero, meaning that negative one is a zero or a root. And then I'm going to place the plus minus signs. Now notice that f prime is positive if x is greater than negative one. Is that true? Well, that's not true. It needs to be less than negative one because think about it, if x is one, you're gonna get a positive answer. So yes, so this is gonna, it's gonna be positive here. If x is less than negative one, like let's say negative two, one minus one half, that's, wait a minute, this can never be, well, it can be zero, but it can never be negative. Why? Because our x values are always positive, exactly. I forgot about the domain completely, let's go ahead and erase this, scratch it out. Okay, rewind the video. Now, we have this function. So x must be greater than zero, which means there is no positive value that makes this zero, therefore, there are no solutions for the derivative, which means this function is always, always increasing. Because notice that f prime is positive if x is positive, right? Therefore, we have an increasing function. It's only gonna be intersected by a horizontal line at a single point. And here's the graph. Then that brings us, oops, I forgot to include it. I apologize. But if you graph it in Desmos level from alpha, you're going to get the graph of this function and you're gonna re realize there's only one intersection point. And this really brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye bye.